In the seminary, I had a wise spiritual director who one time said that one of the most important things for us to do is to surround ourselves with good friends, to have good artwork on the walls, and to always be reading a good book. And what that would mean is that we surround ourselves with things that we know that God would be proud of us for. You know, think about that. The friendships that we have, the people that we hang around with, say a lot about who we are. The conversations that we have uh, say a lot about what is in our own heart. And I think that we know that there are sometimes people in our lives who maybe our conversations are always sarcastic. It's probably not a healthy relationship because it's not reality. I say, what is on your walls at home? If you were to go home today when you walk into your house, what do you have hanging up? It doesn't mean it's expensive artwork, but what does it say about you? Think of a stranger walking into your home, and maybe they see a, a picture on the wall. Does it say something about what you love? Maybe something about a hobby that you have, something that you believe in. I would hope that in every home, in every Catholic home, there is a crucifix somewhere, hopefully in a rather prominent spot that you would see when you walk in the door or in one of the main rooms of the house, a crucifix, because that says what we believe. It says that we believe in Jesus, a crucifix with a figure on it, a figure on it that is suffering, which I know some people say, I don't want to look at a suffering Christ. Well, there wouldn't have been resurrection if there wasn't the suffering too. We don't have a resurrexifix, we have a crucifix. We have a crucifix, meaning that it's, it is indicative of the fact that in order for the glory of God to be shown, there had to be suffering first. And then finally, what is it that we are reading? What is it that we have that we are reading? Do we read only the comics in the newspaper? Or do we look to see a little bit more about what's going on in the world around us? Do we have a book on our Kindle or perhaps by our bedside that we could go to each night to kind of help expand our world? Because by reading, we have that ability to learn. And we're always in the process of learning. I think this, my spiritual director told me that because he was kind of impressing upon me the need to kind of surround myself with positive things in life and good examples good examples, because that's what the Lord wants of us. He tells us this in the scripture reading today, in the gospel. He says, I want you to be good examples, especially to the little ones, to be able to be a light in the midst of darkness. You see, these apostles, they were kind of in a kerfuffle. They were all sort of like uptight because others were starting to preach. Others were starting to do good works. They started to go around thinking that they could talk about Jesus, that they could try to perform miracles. And this upset the apostles because they felt like, no, that's our exclusive group. Almost like they had a copyright on it. And Jesus said, chill out. Don't worry about this. You need to be able to uh, realize that they're being prophetic in the manner in which I've called you to be prophetic to be able to preach the Word of God in a special way. And we need as many people on our team as possible. It's not just for you to do it, but it's, it's something that's a shared responsibility. Building the kingdom of God is not something that one person does alone. Jesus knew that. That was why he invited 12 to be with him. He couldn't do it on his own. And just like on a parish level, it's not the responsibility only of the priest, for instance, to teach. That is a responsibility that we all share together. You, my friends, all who are sitting here today, you are the greatest beacons of light because one person or in a few people together cannot make the difference, but together as a community, we make a difference. And so if we accept the message from God in the Holy Scriptures, and in the real presence of the Eucharist, well then we are called, we can be good examples to be able to spread that. And how is it that we are going to be able to be those examples outside of this one hour a week that we're together? Well, we fill our lives with influences that can inspire us and to help us make good and holy decisions. Very often in our Catholic faith, 
we talk about having an informed conscience. An informed conscience means that we are aware of what the consequences are when we make decisions. An informed conscience is taking the time because God gave us a brain and God gave us the ability to think. He did not give the tree outside the ability to think, but he gave us the ability to think, to make decisions, to weigh the consequences, and to be held accountable. So we talk about an informed conscience so that we are able to avail ourselves of resources so that when we make decisions, we can make the best decisions for not only ourselves, but for many people, for the common good. You know, this morning I was getting ready to come over for Mass at 8 o'clock. And I have to tell you that if you watch a lot of TV, you must be going crazy these days because all that's on the ads right now are political advertisements. And I think how confusing it is to go from one to another. I just want to turn the thing off and say it is just, it's not helping in making any decisions. So how is it that when you go, for instance, in a month into a voting booth, how is it that you're going to make a decision? I hope that you will take the time to know what issues are present, to know what the consequences of those issues are, to know what we uphold as Catholic Christians and people who are Catholic and proclaim and profess to be Catholic, that we hold up that truth in the decisions that we make in the best possible way. That's important. That's being able to say, I'm using my informed conscience to make a decision and to weigh the, and balance. That's so critical, so important. Not enough to have only an informed conscience. It's not just information. It is to have a formed conscience. It is to be able to have the ability to make decisions. When I was growing up, and I would probably go back and think that my parents were probably pretty strict. However, I think they gave us good boundaries. And good boundaries make for good relationship. So relationships. So in forming the consciences of their children as their responsibility as parents, I know that they didn't always tell us black and white. They gave us an ability to make decisions. And you know, sometimes we fell. Sometimes there were decisions made that maybe weren't the best, and I think my parents knew that they weren't going to be the best. But sometimes we have to be able to learn that. We have to experience that. We have to be able to say, okay, I know what the boundaries are, but I respect that you have the ability to have a conscience and to make a decision. Again, the tree does not know how to make a decision, but as people, we do. Jesus also speaks in the gospel today about being an example of being tolerant of others, of spreading the word of God, but also of looking inside internally. And that is the manner in which we are uh, present to God, the way in which we make those decisions, because we, if we have problems in our life or things that we know lead us into darkness or into sin, we need to know how to be able to counteract that. Again, the good influences in our life. Things like uh, the, the presence of the church and the devotional life of the church. They help us in forming the conscience, availing ourselves of the sacrament of reconciliation. We now have confessions, not only on Saturdays, but also on Wednesdays in the evening at 7 o'clock. Taking advantage of perhaps going to the living rosary, which is coming up in about a week. And saying, you know, our family, not only me personally, but our family would like to be more holy. Well, when we surround ourselves with holiness, hopefully through the process of osmosis and understanding, maybe we ourselves can become more holy. So to avail ourselves of the devotional life of the church, starting this Friday also, we're going to every day at three o'clock pray the divine mercy to be able to pray that chaplet. It takes about 15 minutes of time. If you're in the area waiting for the kids on the car line or whatnot, stop by and pray for 10 minutes. 
You know, in the ancient times and in the medieval times, that's what people did. They took time in their day to step away and to say, God, I'm going to be present to you so that I can make good decisions, so that I can be holy, because I want to do that, and I want to be sacred. Jesus speaks in the gospel some harsh language. It's exaggeration in a Hebraic way, because he talks about, well, if your hand is a problem, your foot, your eye will pluck it out, cut it off. Well, let's put that into 2012 language, that there's decisions we make, we fall into sin, we have to assess where we are at as people and what our greatest temptations are. So we put it into 2012 language. For instance, if we feel as though uh, we have a problem with gossip, I I can't imagine someone having a problem with gossip, but I think it's a problem out there today. If you have a problem with gossip, you know, it would be extreme to say, well, cut your tongue off. That that just doesn't seem right. Well, rather, it's set up a good boundary. If you have a problem with gossip, think of the people in your life that you have a tendency to gossip with. Or think of the people in your life, maybe who you are negative with, and try to set some boundaries with that group of people to realize this person is not a good influence in my life. I need to limit my time with them. Because if they are not leading you to holiness, then, and you realize that you cannot change them through your positive influence, well then, maybe you need to have some time of avoidance or separation. If you have a problem with patience, I think it is the mantra of parenthood. I have a problem with patience. A lot of parents, their children, test the patience of the parents. Well, if there's a problem with patience and you feel like you fly off the handle, or as my brothers and I we used to say, mom's about to explode. Well, we kind of knew that patience was not always something that was necessarily her greatest quality. But I also know that when my mother was very rested, she also had a lot different disposition with us as children. When she took the time to make sure she had oil in her lamp, she was able to be a light for her children. What a beautiful example. So as a parent, if you have a problem with patience, maybe you need to make sure you get enough rest, that you have some time, boundaries, with the children, that you're not with them 24-7. If you know that that's leading you into a road of explosion, which is not holy, well, then it's okay to be able to say, you know, I, I need a little bit of time. I need to put, have a few buffers here, and how am I going to do that? Finally, I think in our high-tech era, something that people have a lot of concerns or issues with is the time that they spend watching TV, being on the computer, for instance, playing video games. It's amazing how fast time goes when you're doing those things. Sometimes maybe it seems like it takes very, it's slow when you're at church, but for some reason with the video games for our young people, the time goes very quickly. Well, you know, I'd like to just say and think, well, you know, maybe if you have an issue with the amount of time or the content of what is on the TV, what shows are you watching? What is so interesting that you're going to spend hours a week doing and watching? Maybe it's on the computer. Are you spending too much time shopping on the computer? Maybe buying things that you don't need that are cluttering up the home and that you may have to go out and get a storage unit for because you don't have enough room in the garage for. Well, if that's kind of a problem, and if you're at that point, it's time to declutter a little bit. If the content on the computer is not something that you would want your grandmother to watch with you, we have a problem then. And that's called a boundary, and it's time to set up a filter. Or to say, maybe we don't need to have 500 channels coming into the home. Maybe I can live with the rabbit ears again and get four or five channels. I assure you, you'll have plenty of time to be holy. If the computer is an issue, then maybe that direct access is not the best thing. Maybe it's time to say, I don't know if uh, we need to have full access all the time to having the internet in the house. How do we set up 
boundaries. It is a major thing today because a lot of our world, a lot of our culture today, they don't know boundaries. And if we are able to be, surround ourselves with those good influences, then we can have more time for our God. We can have more time to be holy and to be able to be good examples to others. And I can't think of anything better for our grandparents, our parents, and our young people to give to friends and the next generation than to be a good example. That is what people remember. They do not remember the gifts we give them, but they remember how we treated them. They remember the people that we are because of our relationship with God. And how is it that we live that relationship each day? Because our faith is not only a faith of the mind and of the brain, it is a faith of the heart. It is a faith of living out who God created us to be. And that is to be a light for the world. Because he's called us to be his own.